Over the last year of being single, I've decided that I would take a deep dive in what makes relationships good or bad. Now, uh, let me premise this that I'm not a person who has a degree in psychiatry or anything like that. But over the last year, I've been taking a deep dive, reading some books and just taking uh, observations of what I uh, understand from the dating culture here in Australia. In preparation for this video, I have written down some uh, thoughts, but also taken some statistics from uh, official sources. And so here we go. I also understand that a lot of you will disagree with what I say in this video, and some of you may agree with me. But uh, a lot of it is based in uh, fact and uh, statistics. So the percentage of US adults that who are married recorded a, a low percentage of 51%. The nation's adults who are now married by contrast, in 1960, there were 72% of adults who were married. Now, their US statistics from the US Census Board reports. So, why are so many men refusing to get married? Is it because of women, or is it because of unfair family justice system? Historically low marriage rates in America, the lowest level in 118 years, Women's independence and gender equality is a huge factor in long-term decline in marriage. There has also been complaints from men about the unfair treatment in relationships and family courts. They're tired of being browbeaten by women and the gender bias laws against men. For this reason, millions of men do not want to get married and are opting out of marriage altogether. Avoiding marriage because it's too risky and too costly. Divorce rates are sky high. 45% of marriages end in divorce and 80% of them are initiated by women. In divorce, men usually lose money. They're renowned for favouring women regarding the division of assets, child support and alimony in the United States, even if they're not married. Men lose the custody of their children. In the event of a married couple divorcing, men only get custody of their children 10% of the time, but are always responsible for paying child support and alimony in the USA. Many men complain that the courts send the message that fathers are not essential to raising children beyond the point of paying child support. Over the last several years, there's actually been a campaign to cancel Father's Day. In a society that strives for equality, maybe these gender laws are outdated. Women make up 50% of the labour force so why do we claim unfair gender divides regarding marriage and family disputes? If the risks involved in entering marriage are equally distributed, perhaps more men will feel that they have less to lose. Being aware of the issues men face, empathising and trying to see it from their perspective is a great place to start. The absolute war on men over the last five years has had unexpected consequences for women. A dating expert has claimed that the Me Too movement has made men across the world scared to approach women on the street for fear that they'll come across as creepy or be accused of harassment. My problem with the trickle effect Me Too has had where the... It's affecting normal guys approaching women in a bar or in the street. It's being perpetuated like you've got to be super, super respectful to women. You can't invade their space. You can't talk to her. You can't approach her. So, well, what's left? And women are now complaining that men do not approach them 
when they're out. I do believe that the Me Too movement was a great thing. It exposed a lot of creeps and helped victims of sexual assault heal and f- move forward. Men in power were held accountable for abusing their power to manipulate women into sex. There is another effect. There's a new fear that men have that they'll be perceived as dirty pervits and most likely going to sexually assault you. A large majority of women enter any social engagement with a man putting him into a category of potential murderer or someone I want to be with. Sounds extremely right. Of course it is. But what that does to men is it stops them approaching you because they do not want to be made out to be creepy or be arrested for just saying hello. And so the ones who do walk up to you are usually players. They're not the nice guys that you'd want to actually be with most of the time. Here's the truth of the matter. There will always be evil, murderous and disgusting men out there. And that's not okay and never will be. Trust me. I have always made sure to protect my girlfriend from them whenever I'm out in public. The reality is, though, in most cases it won't happen. Most men are good people, I truly believe that, and you should too. Another thing that I've noticed once I've been out is the fact that wherever I go, if it be on a train, may it be out to a restaurant, everybody's got their eyes on their phone. We don't interact as we used to. We need to stop being in our phones all the time and then maybe we might start to interact again and so subsequently meet more people. Um, We're so enthralled by technology now that it uh, is becoming a problem. The next thing that I've noticed is that people have lost the art of conversation the texting through Twitter and, um, you know, sending each other, you know, texts and that sort of thing. Not actually just getting on the phone and talking to people. Um, I've noticed that uh, in my interactions with the opposite sex in the last year, that most of those conversations have been over text um, or over Twitter. Uh, So we need to start going out and talking to people again. I've also noticed the level of rudeness. You walk up to somebody and if you're not Brad Pitt, nine times out of ten, you'll get thought as a creep. I don't think that's a great idea. It stops men... If you do that enough to a a man, he'll stop walking up. And this is what's happening Uh, A lot of women are turning around and saying that guys just don't walk up and talk to them anymore. Well, that's one of the big reasons is because they're frightened that they're going to be uh, shamed, rather filmed and put on, on, you know, TikTok or something like that, or, you know, just made out to be like a, like a, you know, a, a creep. And nine times out of ten, it's just somebody being friendly. You know, so we've got to stop doing that. It's... It's uh, actually, you know, making society colder than it was 10 years ago. The thing I'd like to talk about is people um, rating people by what they own. We're no longer judging a person for who they are, but what they've got. And ladies, you're going to finish up with assholes if you just look at what a person's got like you know how much money they've got in most cases um there's a lot of genuine people out there who are just average working people and by judging somebody that is you know the six foot tall six pack you know six figure income um those guys know that they're they're top of the bottom and they're going to treat you like 
harshly because they've got the advantage. It all boils down to one thing. What are your long-term goals for life? You might see that the real worth in, in a person is not what they got but who they are. Now the next thing I'd like to talk about is the fact that men and women are not mind readers. We're human beings. A lot of people out there, men and women, are still playing stupid mind games. And also, somebody walks up and talks to you and is maybe a little uh, shy or antiquated and, um, you know, ladies, it costs you nothing to be polite. You don't have to embarrass the guy. It doesn't mean to say that you have to have a drink with the guy. If you're not interested, just say... Thanks very much, but no thanks. For many years I worked as a DJ and I saw many men and women viciously humbled by people. You never get it right on the first on the first go. I've known people that absolutely hated each other when they first met and have finished up being married 50 years. We're human beings, people. We find it hard to get it right the first time. Um, we need to be a little bit softer with people, a little bit more accommodating, a little bit more respectful. And that goes for both men and women. I'm a great believer in karma and everything you put out into the universe will come back to you. Um, there's going to be lots and lots of people out there that will finish up alone because of the choices that they make. And maybe you don't want to be in that position. Maybe it's a time to look at the way you react with people and figure out if what you're doing is the best thing for you. I mean, there are people out there who absolutely enjoy being alone, but I'd say a good majority of people, they want a partner. Now, it might sound that I'm only throwing shade on women here. Men have to do a lot better than they're currently doing. There's a lot of simps out there. There's a lot of weak men. There's a lot of men who have let themselves go and they're overweight and they need to get themselves into the gym. They need to work on their finances and make sure that they're a good provider. They need to be better men. They need to be more truthful to the people they go out with um, and they need to uh, learn to be a man not not a simp there are many great books out there that you can learn to improve yourself you need to be able to look into the mirror and say i respect you because if you can't respect yourself then other people out there can't respect you also not accepting the bad behavior that women Force men to accept. If you disagree with what your woman's doing, then tell her so and tell her that if she doesn't stop it, that you'll go. Because it's better to be single than put up with somebody who is disrespecting you. And ladies, that goes equally for you too. If a man doesn't respect you, then a happy relationship is one that you can sit down and actually work out the boundaries of which each of you are willing to accept. As Jordan Peterson says, sometimes you've got to have the fight. Also, men need to understand that it's a partnership. It's not a dictatorship. So you need to work together because life is hard enough as it is without fighting the moment you walk in the door of a night time. And ladies, you need to also give the man a, a safe space to come home to. Stop the nagging because that drives men away. Now, guys, if you find yourself alone and you've broken up with somebody, don't allow yourself to get into hate. Take it as an opportunity to work on yourself because over the last year, that's what I've done. I've worked on myself. And I feel much better for it. I've identified things in my own character which I need to work on and have. But also I understand why my past relationships haven't worked. I've had a chance to reflect 
and understand that that person probably wasn't the right person for me. I also understand though that every relationship you have, you do tend to learn something from it. So it's never a waste of time and you'll start to attract people when you concentrate on yourself and not allow yourself to get into that hateful rage. There's a lot of men in uh, the different uh, manosphere uh, parts that are just bitter about what they've happened, what's happened to them in their previous relationships and it's just eating them alive. Don't do that to yourself. And same with the ladies. When you've broken up with a guy, work on yourself and um, improve yourself and allow yourself to heal. At the end of the day, men and women need each other. And so we need to get back to the, the fine art of finding our life partners and enjoying our lives. But that's all for me today. You've been listening to Philip Gale and this is Morning Thought Farm. If you've enjoyed this presentation, please remember to like, share and subscribe and also look at the other video that I have up in the right-hand corner. Bye for now.